territory but you are in control the battle wages on God the victory is in you already won God would you speak to us today and give us ears to hear we thank you we pray this in your name amen hey what is up guys I hope you got whoops oh. hopefully you guys are having a good start your week sorry the late um, post again 
Um, but uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're ready for the word. Um, what I've been trying to do is just condense uh, what I'm speaking and uh, and just get to the main points. Uh, keep it short. Maybe that'll encourage more of you guys to stick around for the word. Um, I've entitled the word uh, "Finish the Race, Reach the Goal." Let's get it right. Um, it's gonna be from Philippians three seventeen through four one. Um, so one of my favorite books to study, always a refreshing book to be in. So let me go ahead and read it for us. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have us as a model. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before and I'll tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. Amen. Well, I remember growing up, one of my biggest struggles was fitting in. Uh, in elementary school, and teachers thought I was legit deaf because I didn't say anything. Um, and later in elementary school, I got put in ESL class because I was slow, super slow, and no one wanted to be my friend. Um, and I got called flat face, you know, because I'm Asian. And uh, in junior high, I got, you know, got my teeth growing in. Um, so I got, it was the opposite extreme, I was a buck tooth beaver, um, and I started getting into fights and, you know, getting suspended and, um, just got really tired of everything, just, so I was just, just rebellious, and then in high school, I was just so tired of being the outcast, man, I was just, like, really stupid and desperate to fit in, so I was just like, man, I don't even care about God, I mean, I don't even know if I can call myself a Christian, I was just a church goer. Um, but I didn't care about any, anything else really. I just wanted to have some friends and have fun, um, and just want to fit in. And that was the sad part. I just, uh, you know, I didn't even care about church really, even, uh, because when I go to church, um, it was, just, you know, the same thing, just a lot of clicks and didn't fit in there either. Um, so just really rebellious and, uh, just really worried about the wrong things. But I realized that's just, you know, that's the age. You know, like growing up Korean in a, in a, you know, among white people and, um, you know, it's hard. And right now, like, I don't care about fitting in, like I'm doing my own thing. And, you know, most of, most of us grow out of that, but, um, you know, uh, to an extent it's still around, you know, we don't want society to reject us. So we, uh, we compromise our beliefs, we censor ourselves and kind of, we shove ourselves into a closet because we don't want to be outcast or be called intolerant or extreme and um and i think that's kind of the kind of the thing that i'm speaking on today and i think that is um so and, and it's not too much different from uh the church of philippi um you know a little bit of background they were uh you know, named after philip of macedonia uh, the father the father of alexander the great um and it was the capital city of the greek empire at that time by the time the new testament hits they were taken over by the Romans, and they were a Greek colony, and um, yeah, and then Paul on his second second mission trip, uh, he's in Troas, which is modern day Turkey, and he's chilling. He's got a heart for Asia. He's trying to go east, and then um, you know he gets this vision from God and this man from Macedonia saying, "Please come and help us." That's Acts sixteen, um, and then so Paul goes, and there's not even a synagogue there. That's how like secular that place is. Uh, nowhere to go. So he goes to pray by a river. And you can see why God sent him there. Um, because his lady shows up. And uh, her name is Lydia. And she becomes the first European convert. So the first convert in all of this great continent of Europe is a woman. Um, really cool how the Bible again and again just like, you know, points out that God is not misogynistic. I mean, he created Eve, you know. Um and the first church in Europe is established in Philippi. Uh, Philippi is a great city, you know, a lot of history, um, close to the water, 
had rich gold mines, had fresh springs where you know you get water flowing, which is especially in that time um, priceless. So it was an up and coming city, and they had they they had like lots of different types of people, but three mains. Um, they had these people called the uh, where is it? The Thracians. There's the Greeks and the Romans, and so you got this like up and coming city. Everyone's doing well, but there's like this mixture of this clash of cultures, and um, and so Paul is writing to them. And he's, you know, he's addressing the fact that they're probably trying to fit in. Paul's like, don't worry about that. I want you to worry about following my example. And, um, and the cool thing about it, the interesting thing about this Roman colony is that uh, Rome gave citizenship to the Philippians, um, Roman citizenship. And um, it's actually um, pronounced in Acts 16, uh, where Paul and Silas, while they're in Philippi, they get thrown in jail because they cast a demon out of a... Uh, fortune-telling slave girl and so you know she's not a money maker anymore so they throw him in jail they get beat and on the second day Paul's like bro chill I'm a Roman citizen so the magistrates are like oh and they actually apologize to Paul and Silas and let him go so it shows you how powerful and useful the the Roman citizenship is and here's here we go Paul is talking to the Philippians and his story is totally different and so he says no man keep your eyes on Jesus and there's, the, there's reasons why and the, Paul says there's a lot of opposition. He says, many walk as enemies of the, of the cross of Christ. This world is not neutral. Um, Satan's active. You may not believe that God is real, but Satan does. And he shudders and he hates it and he's working. He's active. Um, so we have to be ready. Um, there's people out there whose uh, God is their temporary desires and, and lusts. You know, it says their God is their bellies. Whatever you want in that time and moment, um, that's what you're driven by and controlled by and affected by. Um, and it's not to say that we can't enjoy the things in the world. Like uh, Tim, First uh, Timothy, I forget what chapter, but I think it's one seventeen says, Command those who are rich in this present age to not be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, because it is so uncertain, um, but to put their hope in God. Uh, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. And so it's okay to enjoy, but the problem is when you make a God out of it. That's when it, we're practicing idolatry. And it's also sadly foolish because we're taking the things that are created and treating them to like a creator. And, you know, the created things that we worship cannot save us or guide us or help us. And the final thing is that they show off living in shameful ways. They glory in their shame. I mean, I don't really have to talk about it. Like, you look at me, social media for two seconds and you see the shame that they are glorifying. And it's, in, especially in America, and it's just absolutely, I can imagine other countries looking at what's going on in America um, and in Europe and just be like, just shake my dang head, you know? Um, and Paul lays it out flat and says, their destiny is certain destruction. Like, they're going to get wrecked. Paul just, he's not apologetic about it. He's like, let me just tell you right now, that is the end goal. So you really want to flow down that river or are you going to listen? And he says, instead, I want you to set, set your minds on spiritual things, on the truth of God. Follow the good examples you have in us. You know, your parents, your pastors, even you can read uh, biographies. I'm reading, been reading for a minute now, um, St. Augustine's Confessions and just learn from those who walk the walk. And even though the Philippians are so proud and uh, of their Roman citizenship. It was so precious. And I'm not, you know, tripping like, it, you know, citizenship's important. It's part of my job. Like people who don't have citizenship or work authorization, they don't have the right, they don't have the same benefits. Life is hard. Protections and, and stuff. So it's important. But, you know, Rome got sacked and fell in AD 476. So, you know, the, temp the citizenship for that is temporary. It is destruction. Um, and our citizenship in heaven can never be revoked. Heaven will never fall, and it is eternal. So glory to God for the promise we have in that. And um, this is this is one point that I made, uh, you know, yesterday to my church, and that is um, to to walk. This is Philippians uh, 1, uh, 28. It says, uh, but he's he's basically saying, I want oh, 27, 28. He's like, I want you to stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one the faith of God. And um, when he starts in uh, Philippians 3.17, he says, I want you to join together 
in in you know following my example it's not it's not an individual thing i want you guys to come together you know there's already this pressure of being left out so in the church y'all should come together to follow the good example make it a group effort like encourage one one another in titus it says to be taught by grace and teaching involves you know rebuking and discipline but it also includes um guiding and encouragement and that's what we do as a community um, to help each other along instead of judging each other and talking smack and gossiping about each other um, we, we stick together um, and the sad thing is we we use other things to unify like oh you know like you're Korean and I'm Korean so we should unify in that I mean there's nothing wrong with that but it's like no above all we we are uh, our identifying common thread is that we're brothers and sisters in Christ we're sons and daughters of the living God um, so that is the punchline uh, to really not, you know, and I asked the, the youth group kids, like, who do you have as a spiritual role model? And really, most of them didn't have, like, someone outside of their parents. And to me, I'm like, man, it's good to have your parents, but um, I think it's even better to have someone who's not your parent, who's, like, outside your family, who can give you that sp- fresh perspective. In addition to your parents, I'm not downplaying at all. Um, one student had like a cousin who's the same age, but um, I think that's special because I was like, why is he your spiritual role model? He's like, it's just the way he talks and the way he conducts himself. And I think that's like in a different way influential. Um, someone who's maybe close in age, someone you really look up to um, in addition to your parents. And, I'm, and so I encourage them really don't just be like, man, they're, they're, you know, they're so super Christian, must be nice. Um, and they make me go to church, make me pray. And it's kind of, an, and a lot of them were saying it's kind of annoying too, that uh, their parents uh, were their role model, but also like you know giving them the the uh, obligations and pushing them. So I like find someone that you really admire for who they are in Christ, and that should be something we are intentional and more active about. So that is the word for today. Um, I hope you're um, challenged this week to really turn a discerning and, and, and judging eye upon yourself to really who who do you follow who influences you um, really who do you see changing your behavior and in, in determining how you live um, and if it's not of Christ if it's not setting you straight and making you you know get closer to the destination which is heaven and if it's making you try to set up camp in this world which the end is destruction then I think we you know, you and I, we have to really, you know, reconsider and we have some changes to make. So that is my prayer for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word in this reminder to really be aware of who we're following and what path we're going down and to follow the good examples that we have in our lives. We thank you for them. Help them to stay strong. We know they're just human too. Um, and help us to live on that straight and narrow. We thank you. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys. Um, Thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a great week. Um, Much love.